What's up guys, Matt here with Matco Metalworks and we are here on the weekend working, which is very typical, but um, the reason for today, uh, this project here didn't get done. It's an old Ford 3000 tractor and uh, it's got a bunch of cracks on it, hairline cracks in the front end loader basically, uh, mostly, but um, it was in here a few weeks ago. I didn't do a video on that because it was just kind of a small, quick repair about an hour and a half, I think, to, to fix what we fixed, and I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, this bled over. We didn't get it done this week like I planned. We had some other stuff going on, just super busy in the shop. So very blessed and fortunate for that with everything going on and the coronavirus and all that stuff. But um, we're staying busy. Uh, we are definitely an essential uh, business, and I'm thankful for all of those other essential employees that are working and keeping things going here in the U.S. And... Um, so it's just uh, just great and truly blessed to have people that uh, go out there and fight the front lines with the EMS workers, police officers, firefighters, uh, nurses, doctors that are uh, there every day. They still go to work and um, even that, it's uh, the, the grocery store workers, people that work at your grocery store, you know, they're, they're uh, definitely essential because uh, people have to eat. But uh, we're here, we're working, and um, so I was gonna kind of show you um, kind of my opinion on, on something. Um, and this is what happens when you have older equipment and you fix something, uh, that new repair becomes the most rigid, solid piece on it, and then you kind of have an after effect. And I think that's what happened here because we didn't notice any of this stuff when it came in the first time. So let's uh, check it out and get started. Here we are, this is the repair that uh, we did a couple weeks ago. You can see the paint the owner put on it. That's a piece of 3 8 um, three by three angle. And basically what had happened was the, because when this, this uh, hydraulic cylinder here pushes out and lifts that front end up, so much of the weight, I'm not gonna say 100%, but a lot of it is right here uh, where this step is, where you get up onto the tractor. The, the frame to this loader is connected at the, the front of the tractor and then also up under the back on the on the rear axle, but you have a lot of weight here. So this was completely opened up all the way across. It was literally probably an inch holding this whole thing from just falling apart. And we grinded all of it out. We had to take, uh, I think we had the forklift setting over here behind me with a come along attached to the top of this. We had the front end loader all the way up in order to squeeze that back together. Um, it, it was it was interesting. We had to just, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And we had all kind of stuff, cables and chains hooked up. We had a chain going to the back axle and we had to come along to the forklift and we had the front end loader all the way up to get the weight and it was, it worked. Um, like I said, sometimes with these things, there's no, there's, no hand, there's no manual to tell you how to do it. You have to figure out as you go. So we did it, we got it done, welded it all up, grinded that smooth, and then put this plate, it's about a 12 inch plate on there. That's not going anywhere. The problem comes in when this becomes, now it's so rigid and strong, it magnifies everything else that there's an issue. And so what happened, the owner said, hey, check everything out while you've got it. Okay, we sure will, that's pretty common. We do that most of the time anyway, We're working on dump trucks, whatever it may be. We'll kind of look it over, see any cracks, we'll grind them out, fix them. That's preventative maintenance. Um, so the issue is we didn't see these. There's two cracks I'm gonna show you. And one of them is right here. Can't see very well, but um, you can see that's been welded before, obviously. No, we did not do that. Um, that's been welded before. And what it is, it's just a hairline crack. And then there's another one up here on uh, the bucket tilt shaft area. You can see that one a little bit better. I've got it marked with a Sharpie. So I don't forget where it's at. And we'll check everything else too, but basically what happens are hairline cracks that um, get magnified when you fix such a big issue that it starts to put pressure on other areas. And then those hairline cracks turn into big cracks. So we'll get in there, we'll uh, grind them out. That one, I'm gonna have to get in there with a die grinder probably because I can't get a regular grinder in there. The other one I should be able to, but we'll show you all that and we'll go ahead and get started and get these fixed up, welded up and uh, get them on his way.
Y... I think golden or gloss sunbeam's gonna work. I think it's a little bright. I think we'll go with the rust -Oleum. It does not match, but huh. Yeah, you look at that. I don't think any of that matches either. yellow on the blue there might as well go ahead and touch up already painted gray definitely not the same yellow so bright that's all we got That's um, where it all started. So basically I had a welder and you don't have to have, I'm running uh, on that that repair, I have the uh, Lincoln 216, um, a Dewalt grinder. And yes, I have a die grinder, but you can use other things to get in there. Um, but even that, a die grinder, I mean, you can go to Harbor Freight and get them pretty cheap. I don't recommend it because I don't like Harbor Freight tools, but, um, you can do that if um, you know if that's what you need to do to get the job done. Um, you know, so people ask me how you started, what you did. This is it. Um, like I said earlier, in my parents' uh, side garage in a 15 by 20 bay, that's what I did. Um, hog traps, trailers, tobacco trailers, um, tractors, implements, plows, front end loaders, buckets. Um, tree stands. Um, we did a lot of stuff for horse uh, farms, a lot of stall doors, repairs, building new stuff. Um, so it, it's out there, I promise you. Um, we turn away a lot of this work now just because this is not what we do. We don't have the time to stop um, what we're doing. We just, we've moved on and graduated to bigger stuff, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. The reason I'm doing this, this is a long time customer. He's a friend of mine and um, you know, so it, I, I kind of hate to say no to them, but um, we don't do a lot of it just because A, we don't advertise for it and go after it, and B, um, we're not in an area where we have a lot of walk-in traffic. We're kind of off off the beaten path a little bit, and uh, I'm okay with that. So anyway, that's it. Um, that's where it started. This is the kind of stuff that if you want to get into welding and you don't have connections with companies or whatever, this is a great place to start, great place to learn on simple stuff. Um, there's no manual for it. You're gonna have to learn yourself if you don't have anybody to help you or teach you, but there's also videos uh, like this, and the, that's part of the reason we do these, to show you guys that there's uh, stuff out there, there's opportunities to uh, go get. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe, like, share, follow along. We got some, some cool stuff coming. Um, I've got a really cool video, hopefully in the next couple weeks, of something completely uh, different from welding, but I think you guys will enjoy it. So hope you enjoy, have a great weekend, and we'll catch you on the next one.